Welcome on my channel. I hope you have a great time and will enjoy this video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit bell button. As it's nearly Halloween, how about we share some creepy stories? I'll go first. When I was about 13, my mum and dad invited round our previous neighbors from the block of flats we lived in until I was 5 years old. Anyway, I'd been sent to bed, but could still hear everyone talking about this and that. Until the woman neighbor said hey Diggs's mum. Do you remember when Diggsy used to complain that there was someone in his room? Well there's a family that's just moved into the floor above who have a 3 year old son. He is complaining of the exact same things Diggsy did. This creeped me out. I had no recollection of any of this. So the next day asked my mum. Her first reaction was you don't remember. Then she told me all about the weird stuff that used to happen. Footsteps up and down the hall. Shit going missing and stuff. She said the final thing to happen was when she was listening to a record one day and it started to slow down. Like someone was holding a finger gently on the platter till it finally came to a stop. My mum said she snapped at this point and started shouting, will you leave us the duck alone? As soon as she said this, the record went straight back to playing normally and we never experienced anything again. I've never experienced anything like that since. And these days I'm quite skeptical of such stories. But I believe my mum. Strangest thing is how I found out about it. From someone else 10 years later experiencing something similar. So Reddit. Halloween is almost upon us. Now's your chance to share something freaky. Okay. This is 100% true. Even though most people I tell this to in real life don't believe me. When I was really little my parents would let me stay up late on the weekends and watch TV until I fell asleep. I really loved these times and I would stay up later than anybody else just because I could. Well one night I was almost asleep on the couch when I heard a noise on our front porch. It was the sound of our old fashioned porch swing moving back and forth. I was a little scared so I crept toward the bay windows of my living room and peeked out towards the porch. Sitting on my front porch swing was an older woman. Probably in her fifth is wearing nothing but a nightgown, covered in blood, and holding a huge kitchen knife. I flipped out immediately and ran screaming into my parents' room, but was too terrified to form words. My parents saw that I was upset, but when I finally was able to tell them what I saw, my dad got really angry and told me that it was just a dream and to go back to bed. I refused and kept crying and screaming until he had had enough and snatched my arm and dragged me towards the front door to prove that nothing was there. I kicked and screamed all the way trying to make him stop, but he kept pulling me. Finally we got to the door. He unlocked it, swung it open, and said see there's nothing th to this day. I have never seen the look of fear and shock that was on his face when that woman turned and stared at both of us and slowly stood up with the knife. My dad slammed the door shut and got my mom to call the police while he went and got his gun. He went back to the door with a 12 gauge and cracked the door enough to stick the barrel out. He asked her what she was doing and she said somebody killed my husband. But it wasn't me. My dad told her that the police were coming and she freaked out, grabbed the knife and walked away. The police found her 15 minutes later trying to break into one of our neighbor's houses. I never slept in the living room again. Edit oh yeah I forgot that after she left. My dad called and warned my crazy uncle who lived next door what was happening. Apparently he was waiting on his front porch with his shotgun when she walked by. He pointed it at her and just said keep moving beach. Update I just talked to my mom and she said that they never really found out the whole story. But apparently she was crazy and off her medication. Her and her husband got into a fight and she tried to attack him with the knife but didn't seriously hurt him. When he got her out of the house, she cut herself with the knife either trying to commit suicide or make it look like her husband did it. The police never talked to us about it so that's just what they heard from the woman's neighbors. My university was bisected by a big lake with a bridge going across it with an island gazebo in the middle. One night I was walking down the side of the lake about to cross the bridge to go to a dorm on the other side. As I was walking down the sidewalk, I noticed some kid in a grey white hoodie with a hood up walking across the section of the bridge on my side of the gazebo, towards my sidewalk. I didn't think anything of him, 
until I walked by a big tree which blocked my line of sight for a second. When I got past the tree, I happened to glance back at the bridge, and there was no one there. He couldn't have possibly walked off the bridge he would have had to go right by me, and if he had turned around in the split second I couldn't see him, he wouldn't have had any time to get all the way back to the island, either. He was just gone. This gets creepier about a year later. I was about to tell this story to my friend, who had been abroad that semester. He'd never heard it, and before I even got to what I saw, he cut in with weight. Did you see a guy in a hoodie disappear? Yes he had seen something just like this freshman year. Ducking weird. I hated walking across that bridge alone from there on out. I'm not sure how freaky it is, since it's not paranormal or anything. But when I was about 7 years old I went on a walk with my babysitter. We were walking back a mile or so to my house on a fairly busy road. And about halfway there she says we should play sim and says. At first we walk faster. Then skip. And then jog lightly. Then she says sim and says. Run as fast as you can. Sim and says turn here. I was slightly confused. But played along. As we turned down the driveway I looked back. And saw two guys chasing after us. One with a bat and the other with a knife. We ran up to a house and some old people living there let us in thankfully. At the time I didn't grasp how ducked up it was that we were getting chased. And I still have no clue why they were. Too long didn't read 80s punks with weapons chased myself and my babysitter when I was a kid. When I was younger we frequently visited my grandparents around holidays. Even though we didn't live in the same town. My aunt lived two houses down from my grandparents. The lady in the house between was creepy. She was a large woman. Over 6 feet. She wore logging chains around her neck. A dress and work boots. The only time I remember seeing her outside was either in her garden in the back. Or when she was washing the outside of her house. Scrubbing the actual building. She did this often. During these times she would yell at us kids. And call us all kinds of things. She would tell us the devil would be coming for us. The adults told us to leave her alone and to avoid her. We would run the distance between my aunts and my grandparents. Because when you passed by she was watching out the windows. It was creepy. And we never went alone. One Halloween one of the cousins dared us to trick or treat her house. I remember how scared I was. But I didn't want to be a chicken. Plus I was going with a group. One of us rang the doorbell and there was a lot of banging noises in the house suddenly like doors slamming. When she answered the door she had a severed head in her hands and we all went screaming. The adults told us it was a Halloween prop and we knew we shouldn't be bothering her and deserved to be scared. About a month later my parents got a phone call that the lady had tried to kill my aunt while she was bringing in groceries and had my young cousin in her arms. The lady had one of them rope saws and had come up behind my aunt with it. She put it over her head and around her neck and proceeded to saw. My aunt naturally flipped and started kicking the door. My uncle came and beat the lady down with a fire poker. The police investigation revealed that the woman had been digging tunnels under her home which were coming up under my aunt's, my grandparents and another neighbor's house. She had been bringing the dirt up and putting it in the raised beds of the gardens. She also had a shrine of some sort underground which had a few severed heads around it. My aunt survived by the way, but has a long scar across her neck. Too long didn't read while trick or treating I was chased off by someone holding a real severed human head. <laughs> Firstly, my wife is also a Redditor and has been severely traumatized by our recent experience. She does not like to talk about this, so to prevent anyone from sending her messages. This is a throwaway ACC aunt. My wife and I buy our first house in February of 2010. We immediately fell in love with it as soon as we laid eyes on it. It had everything we wanted and plus a few extras. For the first month, everything was great. Lots of painting and decorating. Getting it just the way we wanted. Then, weird things started to randomly happen. First it was small things, like things upstairs being moved, put in completely different rooms than where they belonged. I chalked it up to my wife just for getting to put things back where they belonged. The house also started to creak. Pretty loud. This is a fairly new house. So I just figured it was probably settling. As most new houses tend to do. One day, the wife and I was preparing dinner in the kitchen. Our stairs sit right next to the kitchen entrance. 
so any noises upstairs were clearly audible into the kitchen. I turned off the water at the sink, and as soon as I did, we both heard a cough. We have no kids and no one was visiting. The windows were all shut. The television was not on. This sent the coldest chill down my spine, and I could feel the blood running out of my face. I looked to my wife and she too had gone pale, and had this look of absolute fear. Someone was in our house and they were upstairs. I quickly grabbed the sharpest knife I could find, and my wife called the police. I walked to the bottom of the steps, and stood silently, and heard a loud pop creak. Just like the ones I had always heard the house make. My hands were shaking, and my wife was whispering to the 911 operator, telling them we think we may have a robber in our home. The police arrive in minutes. Thankfully, they had been patrolling nearby. The office walks slowly up the stairs. Gun drawn. He calls out this is the police. Is anyone upstairs? No response. I'm right behind him. Walking up the stairs. We look into the first bedroom and closet. Empty. No one in the half bath either. Last room is my office, where I have my PC. No one in the room or the closet. I felt the tension ease away, and felt like a complete tool. Making this officer search the house, only to find nothing. We turn to walk out of the room and right above us. Creak. I just about shat bricks. In my office closet, there is an attic access. The officer pulls the steps down and again calls out is anyone up there? This is the police. No response. He turns on his flashlight, and peeks his head up. He finds a man, in his 40s, kneeling there in the attic, looking dead at him, gun drawn. He tells the man to come out, and put his hands behind his head. They arrest the man. He didn't say a word the whole time, and would not look anyone in the eye. He was scruffy looking, and had dirty clothes on. Me and my wife we are freaking out. I don't think either of us have fully gotten over it. After questioning the man in the police station, we found out that he was a homeless man who found refuge in the house while it was still on the market. He said the doors were unlocked, and so he stayed there. Apparently, a realtor much have forgotten to lock the door after showing someone the house. He said that when people would come to the house, he would hide in the second floor attic. We bought the house, and this guy was living in it for a whole month without us even knowing. It really freaks me out still just thinking about it. When I was a freshman in college I was on a film shoot near Barstow on Route 66. We were shooting on the property of a calf known for the film Baghdad Calf. This property has an abandoned motel attached to it, which is where we were shooting this unbelievably bad horror film. The motel's floor was full of papers. Something I initially figured was a relic from the past, while the motel was actually doing business. A while into the shoot. We started picking up the papers and reading them. They were handwritten letters from the 70s. Perhaps never sent. They were addressed to dozens of different people. Starting out normal. But going on to describe some really, really ducked up things. This was a guy who literally had some demons. He kept talking about how they were watching him and the like. The handwriting also got more and more messed up as we assembled the letters chronologically. Meanwhile. Outside the motel there was a storage container with keep out spray painted on it. Naturally, we were curious. There was a hole in the side, and someone reached in and pulled out some documents. Among them was a letter, on government typeface I think it was the VAP, telling the person who wrote those crazy letters that he was unknowingly a participant of some tests of hallucinogenic substances while he was in the army. This whole time, there was a room in the abandoned motel that was sealed off that we were strictly forbidden from entering. All the windows were covered by plywood, and the door was barricaded shut. It smelled like death. Seriously the worst smell I've ever encountered in my life. I don't have any way to verify whether this is actually a family story, or whether it's an urban legend. But here, my family has lived in rural Nebraska, since they immigrated from Germany in the mid-1800s. Near the turn of the century disease was pretty rampant in the homesteading area, and it killed off members of almost every family. When someone died from illness, time was of the essence, in burying them as not to let the virus spread from the deceased to the living. This meant no wake periods. So an aunt of some unknown number of greats preceding her relationship to me dies of some disease, and she gets buried in the family cemetery under the homestead. The dogs were very fond of her, 
so it wasn't too surprising that after the funeral the two dogs stuck near the grave. The rest of the family began to think something of it when, a week and a half later, the dogs were still visiting her grave almost constantly, but they weren't just at the grave they were visibly distressed, frantic, and often barking while there. This goes on for maybe two weeks, when the family decides to check it out. They dig the casket up and open it. The deceased's hair has all been pulled out. Her fingers are raw and bloody, and mangled from where, on the inside of the casket door, they can see deep scratches in the wood. She was comatose when they buried her, and she came to while underground, spending probably her last five or so days alive in a buried casket. This is my first comment. So I know that doesn't help in the credibility department but this is completely true. So, my mom remarried about 2 years ago. My dad died when I was 12, so she had been widowed for over 10 years. This new relationship was very whirlwind with them meeting, dating, and getting married within 3 months. I didn't know much about the guy, but my mom was happy, so I just tried to be supportive. She moved into his house in Upstead, Virginia, and invited my fiancé and I to spend a weekend in her new home getting to know her new husband. My mom's new home was pretty isolated. It sat on a few hundred acres of lovely rolling hills, and was very picturesque. I was nervous about getting to know this guy, but really trying to make the most of it. Over the course of our first day there though, I felt more and more uneasy. I didn't think it was weird. Just silly. My mom's new husband was being very welcoming and friendly. We were being made to feel very at home. Yet I still couldn't shake this oppressive feeling. I finally chalked it up to me being more upset about my mom getting remarried than I was willing to admit to myself. We spend most of the day wandering around outside since I felt worse when indoors. That night my fiancé and I showered together. When I turned my back to him, he stopped talking mid-sentence and asked. What did you do to your back? Well, nothing. Why? You have a large bruise. I hopped out to try and see it in the mirror. I got back in, and we finished showering in silence. Then it was off to bed. The one window in our room looked out over a pitch black empty field. But I couldn't sleep until I hung something over the window. I felt sure that otherwise someone would watch us through the window. The next morning I had a complete meltdown. I woke up and just couldn't stop crying. I told my finance we had to leave he tried to calm me down by telling me all the things I had been telling myself. My feelings of anxiety were just a result of seeing my mom with someone. The longer I spent with them the easier it would become. But I just had to leave it was only Saturday morning and we were supposed to stay until Monday. But I felt completely hysterical. I knew I was on the verge of a panic attack and my only concrete thought was I had to stop crying long enough to make our excuses and get the heck out. We did. As soon as we were on the road I felt like a weight had been lifted. I was even feeling embarrassed for my behavior. Hoping I hadn't insulted my mom's husband by leaving early. Then my fiance broke the silence. That bruise on your back. Did you get a good look at it? I had. It looked like some had touched the middle of back. With fingers spread wide. With their hand at a tilt. I want to make completely clear. No one had touched my back the previous day. Especially hard enough to bruise me. Cut to three weeks later. My mom comes to visit me. The entire time she's hounding me to come stay with her again. After finally trying to change the subject for the fifth time. I level with her. Before I've even finished telling the story her face is white as a sheet. She tells me she has been feeling the same way in the house. She hates it. She wants them to move as soon as possible. And the real kicker. Her new husband's previous wife shot and killed herself right outside in the same field our room window overlooked. This is a true story. Me and my roommate we'll call him Steven. Had a pretty big party for his 30th birthday. There's cake, balloons, weed, and booze. We were having a great time when one of Steven's friends tells him he'll give him $100 to go to the casino and gamble. But he has to go gamble with him. My roommate says heck yay. They get ready to leave. So does everyone else. And the party ends. So eventually everyone leaves, and it's just me. I clean up a bit. Turn all the lights off in the apartment, except my bedroom light. Get into my nightwear and sit on my bed to watch some TV. As I'm sitting there, I keep hearing this dragging noise. Followed 15 seconds later by a light plop. 
This goes on for 25, 30 minutes. But I don't see anything out of the ordinary, so I figure maybe it's something going wrong with the fish tank. I keep hearing this for 15 more minutes. Thinking nothing of it. When some movement by my bedroom door catches my attention. One of the balloons we used for the party, a big number zero, is sitting at the threshold of my door. Seemingly appearing out of nowhere. I just stare at it like WTF. Then as if on cue, it moves inside my room. Dragging the plastic. Bottom on the ground about half a foot. Floats up about a half a foot. Floats forward about a foot very slowly. And plops the weight back down on the ground. Then it just sits there. Doing nothing. And a few minutes later it would repeat it. All this time I'm sitting there horrified. The balloon continues to move toward me and my bed. Until it plops down right at the edge of my bed and kind of leans in. Right in my face. I jumped up and backed way the duck up. Searching for a logical explanation for what I just observed. I've got two stories. One's creepy. One's not so creepy, but probably appropriate for here. Here's the first my mom is the oldest of six children. And the oldest five are all two years apart from each other. So, when she was in high school and 16, 17 ish, she did a lot of babysitting for her siblings my aunts and uncles. She's babysitting the family one night in winter. And the phone rings. It's the neighbor across the street. Neighbor tells her don't turn around. But we are looking at your house right now. And we can see you and your siblings watching TV. And we see the back of your head while you're sitting on the sofa. Okay my mom says thinking this is really weird. Well. The neighbors say. We also see a man right outside the house staring right into the window of the room you and your siblings are all in. Don't move. Don't do anything. We've already called the cops. Cops show up just a few minutes later. Man fled the scene and was never caught. But being winter. There was a dusting of snow on the ground, and there were footprints all around the house stopping at every window. Here's a second this one isn't creepy in the scary sense, but in the spine tingling sense. At least it is for me for obvious reasons. When I was young I had a dream. In the dream I was standing in a giant field of dying knee high grass, and the field was encircled by a huge range of mountains. It was brilliantly sunny out. There was a path that cut straight through the field. I stood in the middle of the field on the path, in the center of the circle. The path cut straight through both sides of the circling mountains creating a giant gorge at either end of the circle I'm trying to describe this as well as possible. Apologies. As I'm standing in the middle of the circle, out of nowhere my grandfather appears walking towards me. He stops and we have a discussion. It's very nondescript and pretty short, but ends with him telling me that he's proud of me and that he needs to get going. We say goodbye, and he walks away from me along the path towards the other end. I wake up to the phone ringing. My mom answers it. It's the hospital notifying my parents my grandfather had passed away. This isn't much of a ghost story. Peresi. But it fits the theme, and I think some may be able to derive a bit of humor from it. Back in high school, around the end of my junior year I believe, it became popular to go on these adventurous endeavors to haunted places. Literally a group of about 30 of us would carpool to some abandoned house one weekend, or to some secluded forest the next, spending the days at school and between searching for more places like this in the area. Anyhow, we had this cavalier nature about us when it came to potential hauntings. At some point, a friend of mine who was several years older than me told me about how he and his friends would do similar things when they were young. His childhood home backed up to a huge farm and he and his friends would spend their days fishing or hanging out on this farm. So they were quite familiar with it. The owner, apparently a very religious man a priest or pastor maybe, had owned the farm and a small house on the property. The story went that the owner had been locked up for murder and died in prison, leaving the farm to whomever and it wasn't kept up. However, upon hearing the news of this man's demise, my friend told me that he and his friends had decided to go into this house. I guess the windows had been busted out and they opened a door and walked in. He described them fooling around and trying to scare one another. But he had decided to walk up the stairs and upon his reaching the second floor he saw a coffin in the main open room. 
the way he had explained it to me was that he didn't know what it was immediately and sort of sauntered over to check it out, only to have the sudden flash of realization that this was a coffin in an abandoned house. I suppose he and his friends made a quick retreat from the house, of course. He told this part of the story much better, peppering in more details about the man who owned the property that gave the story that mythical, supernatural sort of feel. I remember being frightened by his delivery and sincerity, though it is quite likely he had rehearsed it before for occasions like that. This story had taken place 15 years or so previous to him telling me. I told one of my adventurous cohorts the story, and we thought it would be a good idea to investigate it. I knew where this person had lived, so we assumed we could simply walk behind his house, find the farm, then find the house. We had a grand plan to bring the whole group out on the weekend, but we weren't sure if we were being strung on a lie, or if this place was still there, if it were true. Anyhow, after football practice one weekday, he and I drove out to the street my friend lived on. There was definitely a farm behind his and his entire street's homes. We decided to go ahead and sneak through someone's yard and onto the farm to see if the house was there. Once we made it through the manicured suburban yard and through the brush separating the farm, we were knee deep in an overgrown field. We sort of hacked our way through a bit, and sure enough as we made it to the edge of a hill the house was only a hundred or so yards away. We had made it that far, so we decided to go in and investigate. As we approached this house, there was a huge blackbird perched on its roof. Once we were within 20 feet of the house, the bird flew away from the house and perched upon a tree adjacent to the house. Being a bit nervous, we began questioning why the bird had made such an odd move, but thought better of making a big deal about it. Now, this house is the prototypical haunted house. It had that quaint, historic look to it, with the broken windows, eerie shadows, and sort of ominous stature one associates with a haunted house. There was even a grave marker in the front yard. So, again, we were increasingly nervous as we approached this house. The door was jammed shut, but the window had been completely removed. So we played rock paper scissor for who would climb through first. I had the luxury of going in second, but did so quickly as being on the porch by myself was just as unsettling. The inside of the house had literally not been touched. Besides where the damage, most everything was intact. There were pictures and decorations still up, with a bit of furniture remaining. We eventually became comfortable with being inside and began to snoop around. Of course, we were fearful of trekking upstairs, afraid to find something we didn't want to find. Alas, we squeamishly crept up the stairs, only to find an empty space. At this point, we became at ease with walking around the house, laughing off the ghost story mystique. As we looked through the main floor again, I noticed that there was a tiny door in the kitchen. It was about knee high. Undauntedly, we flung it open only to reveal a dark stone stairwell that a person would literally have to crawl down. Its presence alone was terrifying, for some reason but it had a landing about halfway down, with the stairs turning a different direction, and out of our sight. However, perched on the landing and partly concealed by the walls to the other part of the stairwell was a large, rectangular, wooden box a coffin. Now, my friend and I weren't exactly small people, so I would imagine the sight of us pale-faced, with a cartoonish hair on neck, shocked expression trying to both squeeze out of a window at the same time, would have been quite comical. Not to mention the both of us in a dead sprint heading away from this house through waist high weeds. I still laugh thinking about both of us running like that. Anyhow, we turned to look back about halfway to the end of the farm just in time to see that massive black bird fly back from the tree and onto the house. We probably made double time from that point on. Not nearly as cool as the other stories, but it's as close as I've been to it. In hindsight, the whole thing was a bit odd. Most especially the behavior of the bird. My friend and I attributed it to some sort of supernatural power. So at the very least we had a better reason to run like children. My dad tells a story. And I will do the best to recall the details. But my dad was 12 or so. And had a cousin that was 8 or so. My dad's aunt had driven down from Lowisville for the weekend. To visit with the family. And brought the kid with her. 
My dad said that when the kid arrived he told him that he had had a bad dream the night before, that we was in a coffin and he couldn't get out. My dad told him not to be silly, and my grandfather and dad were going to the feed mill to pick up a load of grain and he rode with them. On the way they passed the church graveyard and my dad's cousin asked my grandfather that if he were in a coffin would he be buried there. My grandfather laughed and said maybe one of these days, but that is a long long time off, so he shouldn't worry about it. They get the load of feed at the mill and head back to the house. The next day on Sunday they get up and go to church, and in Sunday school they had all the kids together, and my dad said his cousin asked what it was like to be with Jesus, and the teacher tried to continue on with her lesson plan, but then he started to cry, and said he needed to know. So she changed and talked about what they thought heaven would be like. After church he was crossing the road to the parking lot and was hit by a car and killed. My dad and grandfather will say it's almost like he knew he was going to die then. Gives me the shivers a bit. When I was about 6 or 7 years old my family decided to go on summer vacation up to a little island in Maine. We rented out this old house on the water. From what I can remember. There were about 6 or 7 other houses on the island. Everyone else who lived there was in their 60 plus years of age. Except for this mid 40s gentleman who fished on the water. His name was Bubba I shit you not. Anyway. The island was exceedingly creepy. Everything about the house was really old. Every piece of furniture from that house was probably over 60 years old. Not to mention there was no television. Running water was used through a well and pump. Hundreds of books and pictures in the house dated through at least the last 100 years. To make things more pants shittingly creepy was there was an infestation of rats in the backyard that would run around at night. Also, whenever we made dinner all of the old ladies who lived in the houses on the island somehow knew and would show up and give us blueberry pie and fresh caught bluefish. It was really creepy. It was as if everyone knew what we were doing and when we did it. Long story short. A few nights into our stay at this house my parents started hearing singing at night. They said that it would start and stop for about 20-30 minutes. The first few nights they didn't think much of it. The following day, they asked around, but they couldn't find the source of the singing. The second to last night on our week long stay my whole family heard the singing. And we went outside to find out what was going on. It sounded like a choir of children. It really freaked all of us out, but we didn't want it to ruin the trip. It was just very mysterious. The next day my dad starts checking out some of the old photos and books in the library and finds this old scrapbook dated to the early 1920s. The house we were living in was once an old schoolhouse, and there was a picture of the boys choir. We all shat bracks. Left the next day. Using an alt for this, because I don't want anyone I know in real life. To know my real ACC and lol. Anyways, I grew up in a small town in Kansas that I have since gotten the duck out of. The town had tons of meth addicted trailer trash. One time a good friend of mine spotted some creepy abandoned house on some off road several miles outside of town. We were ducking stupid and decided to check it out. You could tell it was abandoned because the windows were all busted out and all that. The front door was jammed shut. But we managed to get in by shoving ourselves into it hard enough. The house smelled like chemicals. I'm not sure how else to describe it. But the air kind of stung your nose very slightly when you breathed in. One thing I saw but never gave a second thought to until later was a metal can full of rocks with a string cutting across about a foot above foot level in a doorway. We just stepped over it. We even chilly made our way upstairs. There was broken glass all up the stairs. And it cracked loudly as we walked up. Yes. I know at this point you're going to think we were dumb as heck for not getting the duck out of there. And you are absolutely correct. But we were some dumb 16 year olds who were a bit too curious. Anyways at the top of the stairs we saw some scary as heck junkie. He was holding a handgun. He was freaking out. And screaming shit at us. We ran the duck out of there. Turns out we stumbled into a meth lab. I drove past the place a couple years ago, and the house has been torn down. Scariest thing that's happened to me though. Duck everything about this thread, but seeing as I'm here, and now completely awake, I'll share a few stories. Lots of creepy things have happened to me growing up. My mum's a spiritualist, and for a while a medium it's something she said you really had to train at. 
so things used to happen quite a lot around her. Not a lot happened to me, but one of the things I remember most was a party we were having in my house. It was late and everyone was crashing in my and my little sister's room, and we were having a big pillow fight cliche. I know in the dark, all of a sudden my friend stops and takes a weird gasp. Now my room was strange. It was very narrow, only having enough room to fit a bed and a table, but it was very long. At one end of the room there was also three steps that led down onto another smaller area. My friend was looking down at this area, and as I looked down, I could see the figure of a cloaked man standing at the top of the steps. I freaked the duck out, and banned the light on and sure enough, no one was there. There was about five, six of us in the room, and every single person saw the same man. Whether or not it was a trick of the light is debatable. But we all slept with the light on that night. We were all around 12. Another event I remember was an evening I spent in my friend's house a different friend. Let's call her Lisa. Still about 12. Her parents were out for the night. So we were all up in her room. Playing music and dancing like Egypts. There was about 5 of us that night too. She had a big golden lab dog. And all of a sudden. He got up out of the room. And ran downstairs and started barking. Next thing we hear what sounds like Lisa's dad literally screaming. Lee I Sarah. We all freaked out. Cause her dad didn't know we were there. And was gonna have a complete shit fit. We whacked the music off and ran downstairs. Only to find. That her dog was barking at a random corner in the room. We didn't take too much notice of this at the time. But we all ran out the back door. And ran a little up the street. I looked around to notice Lisa wasn't with us. And started back towards the house a bit. It was at this point I noticed there was no car at the house. Meaning there was no way her dad was back. Lisa then came running out of the house in tears. Saying something had stopped her coming out the garden. And was saying her name. I brought her back to my house and she stayed there. Until her parents came home. It wasn't until about 3, 4 weeks later. I wanted to go over to her. House and she, if she wanted to come out she lived in a house. That was across a field from mine. I tried ringing, but got no answer, so I got my old video camera, and used it to zoom in to see if anyone was in. The way her house worked, was there was the living room, then the kitchen behind it. There was a window directly behind the living room window in the kitchen, so you could see straight through into the garden. I was checking this out, when I noticed a figure moving in front of the light from the window and blocking it. I thought grand. She must be in. But with closer inspection I noticed that the figure was someone I had never seen before, and they were staring right at me. From across the field with my camera, I ducking freaked. I called my sister in to have a look, but when I came back in, it was gone. We were there another few minutes when a car pulled up, and Lisa and her whole family got out and brought some shopping into the house. I told her about it much later, and she confessed she saw things all the time in that house. Needless to say I stopped staying as much. Another event was with my brother. He'll never admit it. But he's very receptive to otherworldly kind of things. The story I remember the most was when we lived in a three story house. He had the top floor. But he also had a recliner chair in his room a Joe chair. He started complaining that he'd see what looked like the shape of a person in his chair. But always assumed it was the way he'd thrown his clothes on the chair. One night. He decided to investigate. He got up. And walked slowly over to the chair. And when he got inches away from the face. Of whoever was in the chair. It disappeared. I have never heard my brother scream like that in my life. Everyone on all three floors heard him that night. He would also see things like nooses hanging from the ceiling etc. Thank you for watching. If you are interested in NSFW stories without censorship. Then check out my Patreon link in description.